We are designed to move beyond simply preserving joy for our own lives and rise to become joy catalysts who change things in our sphere of authority. Sometimes we need to be prompted with a view that is one or two stages ahead of where we're at in order to provide perspective to our current state and to spur us on, um, allowing us to think and realise that there's more to life than maybe we thought originally. Now this quote by Roland Verton did this for me. It provided a different perspective in terms of joy, in terms of not simply preserving it for myself, but thinking how can I be a catalyst for others? How can I influence those around me with joy, whether that's one person or a million people? Now, throughout life, um, it's really all about um, passing things on, to cultivate, to activate, to multiply, and it's no different with joy. So how do we do this? Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel that helps you to be more and do less. Today, I'm gonna to simply share with you five suggestions or thoughts I have that can help us in this journey to be able to be joy catalysts and to create an atmosphere around us that invokes joy in others. I'm going to keep it quite short and concise with a few questions, um, quotes and examples and remember to stay on to the end for my bonus tip. So let's get into things. The first suggestion I have is all around the stories that we share. Now Professor Robert McKee says that stories are the most powerful way of putting ideas into the world. Stories help us understand ourselves and understand others. They kind of create empathy where we try and place ourselves in that story and just join with it and it kind of unlocks something within us. Now, when we share stories, we have this ability then to, I suppose, influence the culture around us. So if we share stories of joy and what joy is welling up in our lives, then we have this opportunity to create an atmosphere of joy around us with the people that we connect with. So why not try sharing a story that you have around joy or your daily joy stories with the people around you and see on what happens. My second point is around the heroes that we hail. Now in life we all have our heroes, people that have influenced us over our lifetime, whether they're people we know or people uh, that we've seen on TV and that inspire us. And this admiration kind of leaks out of us when we interact with others and sometimes this can be a subconscious leaking. We also tend to point to our heroes as examples when we're trying to express things. Therefore if we want to create an atmosphere of joy um, around us we should be pointing to heroes within our lives that inspire that aspect, that are joyful, that inspire us to think yes I want to be like them. So who are you pointing people to? Who are your heroes in your life that invoke this aspect of joy? My third suggestion is around the aspect I'll call the people that we are positioned with or the people that we hang out with. Now we often see this in I suppose play groups and younger years at school where we're often defined by who we hang out with, whether we're in the football crowd or the geek crowd or the bookworm crowd. But the people that we hang out with will influence us and will influence other people's perception of us. Therefore, if we're trying to create a atmosphere of joy and a culture of joy around us, then the people that we hang out with and position ourselves with will have an impact. So why not have about a think about that? If you want to create a atmosphere of joy around you, who have you got around with you? Are you including with you people who inspire joy as well? Because that will help create that atmosphere around you also. My next point is around the things that we sing, say and pray. Now how we express ourselves and communicate will influence the culture and atmosphere around us. For example, in terms of the things that we sing or when we listen to, to music, that has a whole um, ability to get into our heart and soul to the degree that we end up humming um, things and expressing things that we might not actually realise that we're doing because we're doing it subconsciously because it's got into our heart and soul. Therefore, um, it can be the same with the things that we say and the things that we pray as well. Therefore, building on that, the things that we feed ourselves with will influence what we communicate. So why not today think of things that can um, that are joyful? Feed yourself with things that are joyful, that really invoke joy in your life. And as a result, subconsciously things, you'll express things and communicate things um, that are joyful and you'll create that atmosphere. We also need to be intentional about how we talk about things, how we pray about things, and even when we sing about things as as well because this intentionality if we focus on joy in that as well that will also help us. 
My final point is around having the faith to show failure. So it's a little bit different to the, the other points I've brought out. And it might seem a little bit strange, creating an atmosphere of joy by showing your failures and things that have gone wrong. Well, for me, this is all about authenticity, about showing that actually our lives aren't uninterrupted by failure or things that go wrong. They are every day. Nothing's perfect. But demonstrating or returning to joy in the face of challenge, in the face of disappointment, is a powerful thing. The contrast of this and showing the reality of things really invokes joy because despite all of the things that are going on in life, we can respond and return to a state of joy. So if you've developed a deep sense of joy in your life where you're able to respond and rebound from challenge and disappointment quickly, then you'll be able to invoke and demonstrate this atmosphere of joy because you're just being authentic in your everyday life and people will see that. So on to my bonus tip and it is simply this, celebrate what you want to replicate. So if we want to replicate joy and invoke joy in other people's life, we need to celebrate it. Now this is a bit of a general principle from developing culture and influence, but it is really relevant here. We need to openly celebrate, bring attention to the joy that we are cultivating in our lives. And as we do this, the atmosphere will develop and the culture will form. Now for myself, I struggle a little bit with this. I kind of do things and I move on and don't spend time to celebrate and then acknowledge them. So why not join me in trying to improve a little bit on this area and think about this area? Celebrate what you want to replicate. Celebrate the joy in your life and the things that lead to joy in your life. So if you want to create this atmosphere of joy around you, it invokes joy in others. Remember to share your stories, to point to heroes that invoke joy. Have people around you that are joyful and express this daily. Watch the things that we say, pray and sing and have faith to show others around you your failings, your vulnerabilities, how you return to joy despite those. We really just touched the surface of this subject today, so why not go deeper? Which of the suggestions really stood out for you? Which one do you think actually, no, I could need to make that adjustment in my life? Well, note it down and then use this tool, the learning circle, to help you process it, appraise where you're at and to take some action. Now, if you've got some suggestions and comments around how to invoke and develop a culture of an atmosphere of joy, then I'd love to hear them. Please put them in the comment section below and I'll come back to you. So that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, then please subscribe, share and like this video. This will get the content out to others who could benefit from it also. Please remember to check out these two videos as well that complement um, what I've talked about today. And remember, be fruitful and I'll see you in the next video.